tell you where the fish are. Careful, careful. Get in there. Ooh, that's a nice fish. Yeah, yeah man. I'll tell you where the fish are. Yeah, man. Man. Hey everybody, Chris Schaefer coming to you from Alberta, Canada. We're here with Potsky Outdoors and we're teaming up today with the government of Alberta to talk to you about trout fishing. Not just any trout fishing, but fish that are raised in the province and stocked anywhere from the prairies to the foothills all the way up into the Canadian Rockies. And we're talking about how easy it is for a guy to go out there and have some opportunity to catch plenty of planted trout. Now we're here with Ryan Lister. Ryan is a fish technician with the Alberta government that's in charge of stocking some of these lakes. And we brought him here because guess what? He drives the stocking truck, he raises the fish, he knows where the fish are and what they eat. Tell us a little bit about your stocking program here. So, um, like Chris was saying, we're, we're stocking uh, water bodies, you know, from north to south, east to west. And our main purpose is to provide fishing opportunities where they otherwise wouldn't exist, provide some species that you wouldn't otherwise be able to catch. And it helps alleviate some of the pressure on our, on our wild fisheries. It allows a guy to take a fish home uh, if he wants to put one on the pan. And uh, we do a number of different species in the province every year. Now one of the things you got to consider is Alberta does do a great job at taking care of their wild fisheries, uh, some of the wild trout, some of the native trout opportunities that are available, but they also excel at putting a lot of trout in places where they're easy to catch for people. And we're going to focus today on how easy it is to come out here and catch some of these trout. What kind of trout do you guys raise and, and how many trout a year do you stock province-wide? So in total we're looking at a couple of million uh, trout uh, between the two production facilities, one in Calgary and one in uh, the city of Cold Lake. Um, primarily we're doing rainbow trout. Uh, the reason we do that is they're fairly easy to raise in a hatchery setting and they provide a great sport fishing opportunity. Uh, but to create some alternative opportunities we also do uh, brown trout and brook trout every year and uh, we're looking at about 30,000 brown trout, 50,000 brook trout a year. And then on a, a four year cycle we're doing uh, grayling. On a two year cycle we're also doing cutthroat trout which we actually spawn in the wild and then stock them into a select number of water bodies. The longer you listen, the longer you realize there's a ton of opportunities available province ride. Whether you're a hardcore guy that's been fishing your whole life or somebody that can come out here for the first time, we're going to show you how to rig up, how to fish for these trout, and another thing to consider is, hey guys, we're in the central part of Canada, there's a lot of bugs out here, a ton of bugs. And what do bugs mean? They mean that your fish actually grow once you put them in here, right? That's right. So anytime we're going to be stocking a water body, we got to make sure that there's certain parameters that are that are there. We got to have good water quality. Uh, there's got to be food for the fish, and uh, the lake's either got to overwinter or we're going to be putting an aeration system in there. So right yeah. now, these fish go in fairly small sometimes, and sometimes they go in brood size all the way this big. But one thing that we've learned is a lot of these lakes have carryover, which means fish you put in three, four, five years ago are available for guys to catch really large trout. Correct? Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. So. Uh, some of the lakes we have been fishing, you know, you're going to see three, four year old fish and maybe the odd one that's a little bit older than that. And the great thing is you can come out and you're going to get a variety of sizes of fish. You're not just going to be catching the same size fish. That said, we also do stock some water bodies that are closer to some of the major centers where we're putting a catchable size fish in right away uh, with, with the intent that families are going to go out, fish them, they're going to get fished out and we're just going to keep replenishing that as well. So Now there's so many opportunities available province wide. One of the things that we need to talk about today is before you go out there and fish that lake, pick up your set of Alberta fishing regulations, take a look, it'll tell you exactly what you can and can't keep. We're gonna be focusing on bait today. Remember, it doesn't matter if it's just a bait lake. If you're a fly fisherman, come on out here, throw your fly. If you're a spin caster, throw your spinner. You like casting spoons, have fun. Today we're gonna to be fishing with balls of fire salmon eggs. And we're gonna show you why these Alberta trout absolutely love to gorge on eggs. It's a nice fish. Nice, Jamie. Nice fish. Nice fish, dude. Oh yeah. Nice rainbow. Great start to the day there. What are we, two minutes in? Oh yeah, a couple casts. Yeah, a couple casts, just like that. Nice. <laughs> you gotta love it. Got a little jam in them too. Right on. Healthy fish. You see the colors on that guy? I think he just ran his head into the side of the boat. <laughs> just landed this probably a nice little 14 inch uh, rainbow. Uh, had it on a split bobber setup, probably only running about uh, 
two feet, two feet of depth. Uh, kind of flipping, uh, flipping into shore like bass fishing. It's kind of a unique fish uh, fishery in this lake. Um, yeah, as soon as it hit, uh, just uh, give it a wiggle, and uh, yeah, you hit it. You hit it really hard. I was using the uh, the red uh, salmon eggs. Oh, did you have the glitter ones? Nope. The regular red. Regular red. About time somebody uses something no, other the than the, the so, yellow. Yeah, he hammered it and uh, put up a good fight. Scrappy little fish. Pretty little. Nope, but again, real close to shore. Uh, these guys have been tight to the bank. Just oh, actually, he's got a little bit of a little bit of tug to him now. Actually, it's not a bad fish. Okay, he just realized he was hooked. Oh yeah, there we go, there we go. Nice, another nice rainbow. Look at that. So there's a lot of depth to this lake, but these guys are hanging out in the shallow, so we've been, we've been fishing right within the weeds here with these uh, little flip bobbers. There he goes, going for a run under the boat. Gorgeous, gorgeous. Beautiful rainbow. Oh, there he goes again. Hit your balls, eh? Hit your balls. <laughs> balls of fire. fire. There we go. Right on. Thanks, bud. Right on. Nice bow. So yeah, that guy's that guy's got a couple of years in this lake for sure. So beautiful, healthy looking fish. Good little scrap there once he knew he had a hook in his mouth. So we're just uh, we're just casting along fairly close to shore here. There's a lot of weeds uh, running along here. And I'd say we're probably no deeper than five feet. Uh, and these fish seem to be moving in and out of the weeds, uh, picking off uh, either bugs or little minnows that are swimming around here. So they're probably dipping in and out of cover and we're just fishing the edge of that. And uh, we've been having a lot of luck uh, fishing a lot shallower than what we thought we would have uh, would have been catching fishing when we initially showed up. Little guy, but uh, right in that same spot. Had about three hits in a row before this guy finally got on the hook. What do we got here? Oh, we got a little brookie. That is a brookie. We got a little brookie. Yes. Nice. Man. So that's definitely this year's stock, but that's great. We've been catching nothing but rainbows. We knew these guys were in here. And uh, and finally, this beautiful looking little fish. So. Right on. Hey guys, Bojangles here coming from a gorgeous foothill back lake here that is completely loaded with trout. Now I'm going to quickly break down my setup here. It's been a really hot summer and the lake we're on here in August has seen a lot, a lot of weed growth now. This is a lake you generally don't want to bottom bounce in the middle of the summer. That works great after ice out and late in the fall once the weeds die down. So the technique I'm using today is a very simple bobber technique. All I have here is a nice little slip float, bobber stopper just above it. We have a few little split shots pegged on our line, running four to six pound mono generally, to a barrel swivel, 20 inches of fluorocarbon leader, to our little size 12 to size 14 hook, give or take on how many eggs you want to bait on your hook. Now, it is really weedy over here, and uh, this presentation has been working the best because it keeps our bait suspended in between the weeds, and it allows us to fish little pockets where these fish cruise along the shorelines right here really really effectively and uh, this setup here has been the ticket for us pretty much this whole trip. Oh yeah it is a nice one. Another thing we want to talk about when trout fishing is just simplicity. And what I mean by simplicity is you don't need to have a $500 rod and reel. You can get away with something very inexpensive, very cheap, and something that's going to help you catch a lot of fish. Here we are, spinning reel, plain spinning rod, four pound test. We're going to show you how easy it is to use. You can, you can use the slip bobber technique, or if you're a new angler and you're not very sophisticated, all you need to do is take your little hook right here. You put a regular bobber on the top, 
and you can move the bobber, which will achieve the same kind of success that you do with a, uh, a slip bobber. You know, slip bobber is a little bit more technical. Uh, you may not know how to tie it, but if you don't know how to tie it, you come use something pretty simple like this. A couple other things you want to consider when you're going out there. You want to use a salmon egg hook for salmon eggs. This is a size 6. We're using a size 6 today, partially because we're not keeping a lot of fish. If you use a smaller hook, a lot of times they'll swallow those. This larger hook, a lot of times it hits them in the mouth. Everybody has seen water gremlin split shots. Tiny split shot right below your bobber, and you can fish that egg if you're not using a sliding sinker rig. Just put a bobber there, uh, I mean a, a split shot, and what the split shot does, just gives you a little bit of weight, helps you cast. And then again, it doesn't matter what pound test you use. Here's a Berkeley four pound trialing. It doesn't matter as long as you have four pound test, you'll be okay. You're not gonna catch any whales in here. Four pound test will be able to handle them all. And we all grew up on the small little bobber. You bring your kids out here, put a bobber, you're ready to go. Bad. How's she feel? Talking good, probably. Can't see the net. Careful with those weeds, dude. Got a net, I'm gonna bring him up and around. Yeah, he's got him. He's coming. Ooh, it's a oh, big one. Oh, Take oh, your time. Take that. your time. Go ahead, I'll let you go in front of me. I don't want him in these weeds. Take your time. Jeremy, why don't you step down? Yep. Let's get him out of these weeds quick. Careful. Yeah, hold on. Careful. Yeah. Just gently, just gently pull him. There you go. There you go, turn your body towards us. Oh, oh, oh. Come on, fish. 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 Oh. Nice. This beauty we got here. Bolt it up. Drifting green label over here in the shallow weedy areas. Beautiful fish. Look at the colors on that thing. Shoulders and everything. Very nice fish. Bam. So this is one of our uh, beautiful hatchery rainbows. Um, this guy's probably been in the lake for uh, three years now at this point. So he's pushing, I'm, guess, I'm gonna guess here, we didn't measure him, but about 16 inches or so, but just beautiful colors. And uh, they're hanging out in the shallows again, uh, just cruising around looking for food. But uh, you can see he's gill in there and we're just gonna give him a little bit of time before he kicks off. Oh, they're gorgeous, absolutely gorgeous fish. We've been catching a lot of fish today, have a lot of success with salmon eggs. And one thing you gotta remember, never come to the lake with just one egg. We fished this lake the last couple of days, sometimes in the morning, sometimes in the evening. The first time we came out here, only the yellow jackets worked. It was very interesting. They wouldn't hit the red egg. That was on a cloudy day. All of a sudden, today the sun came out and guess what? The green label and the gold label took the show. So another thing to consider is you have your orange and yellow eggs, your orange deluxe, your yellow jackets, these are your natural colored eggs. A lot of times your browns, your brookies, will really key in on the natural colored eggs. Then, a lot of times when you switch over, your rainbows are really excited about red. I always bring two with me. I bring one gold label. Gold label has gold flakes. It's a little attractor in the water. And if sometimes you don't need an attractor or the fish are very skittish, your green label will work great. You got a big, large egg, very uniform egg, always gonna stay on the hook, catch you a lot of fish, and remember, soft but satisfying eggs.